Today we're gonna to add to the heel pull. So remember this drill where we put our forehead to the wall and I pull myself off using my toes? And then we do exactly the same thing in the handstand. But instead of using the toes, I use my fingies. So I kick up to the wall, make my body one segment, push through the fingers, the energy gets to my heels, my heels come off the wall into the handstand, I relax the fingers, I go back to the wall. So that's the heel pull. Today I'm gonna to take you through some progressions of the heel pull, how we can do some shape changes, and how we can change the distance away from the wall, which is gonna increase the strength demand. So let's just quickly run through the basics of the heel pull. So remember you're pulling yourself off the wall because the body stays as one segment. The biggest mistake most people make with this is that they change the position. They don't keep the body as one segment and then it's really hard to come off the wall. So exactly the same thing happens here. So instead of staying in this nice tight position, we tend to do this, or we bend the arms, or we change the position. Now you might still be able to get off the wall, but what tends to happen then is that we whip the feet and we fall down, or we lose control, or we collapse back towards the wall. So what we wanted to really work on is keeping the body one segment. Ideally we're working up so we can get five to 10 repetitions of that. So we're pulling from the wall to our handstand, relaxing the fingers going back to the wall pulling from the wall to the handstand and back do that for repetitions ideally we'll get all the way to the handstand the other way of doing it is just little flutters off the wall if you're not quite got the control yet to go all the way to the handstand so we just come partially off the wall so I like that car going up the hill where you just keep the foot just enough on the accelerator so you stay still you don't put your foot all the way down so you go all the way to handstand or over you just keep yourself so you can just go on and off the wall, on and off the wall. Once you've built control there, then we'll just increase the time under tension in the handstand. So you could pull from the heel pull to a 10 second hold, a five second hold, or even up to a 30 second hold in that position before returning back to the wall with control. The more advanced version would be to kick to a freestanding handstand first, and then I'd slowly take the heels to the wall kiss, come back to my freestanding handstand, so it's like the freestanding handstand is the, the home position. And then we return back to the wall, kiss, come back off again. Now that will keep people busy for around six months, nine months, until they can really get that with lots of control. Obviously we can wait until we become an expert at that drill before adding to it, but I like to start to play around with it before then, but still make sure you're working on the fundamentals of the heel pull and making sure you can do those repetitions and pull away to a hold. Then we can start to measure it. The further I come away from the wall, the harder it is. So if I put the marker down, I put my index finger on the marker, I kick up to the handstand, make the body one segment, pull away, show control, go back to the wall again. Then I move the marker further away and try the same thing. I wouldn't jump this far in one go. I'd go in smaller increments, unless you know you can do out here already. And what you're gonna notice is now the position has started to change. So I'm not such a straight line. We're having to curve the body a little bit, but when I pull into the handstand, I reclaim a good position before returning back to the wall again. Now I can just keep moving that further and further away from the wall. You are going towards a Mexican hollow back or even like a scorpion. So if I take the head in towards the wall, that's more of a scorpion position as I pull away. But again, make sure that you can get back to your good position before you return back to the wall. Now a different way we can use this heel pull is to change the body into a different position. So let's look at the straddle and the tuck. So in the straddle handstand, we want the butt coming to the wall and the feet coming off the wall. We don't want to be in this position. So when I'm in the straddle position against the wall, my butt's touching, my feet are off the wall, as opposed to my feet touching and my butt against the wall or off the wall. So this is too overbalanced. So I'm going to fall on my back if I've done this freestanding. Ideally, we want to be more into this position, so having the feet away from the wall and the butt touching. So a great drill to work up to is to have a heel pull. We pull off the wall into our straight handstand. We open into straddle, take our butt back towards the wall, kiss the butt to the wall, pull back off, bring the legs together, heel touches. So try not to touch the feet against the wall when you go into straddle. And try not to get your butt against the wall when you're straight. So butt's off the wall, heels are on. And now I open to my straddle till I find the wall. Now I pull back off and go back to my straight, my heels touch the wall. So butt touches the wall in straddle, heels touch the wall in straight. And I transition between those two, controlling the movement with the fingertips, exactly the same as we've done with the heel pull when we was in the straight position.
And we could do exactly the same in our tuck handstand. So however deep you can go into your tuck, try and get it so your butt just kisses the wall. Then I'll know my distance away from the wall. So for me, today is around there. And then my straight position is there. So heels touching, do my normal heel pull, come down towards my tuck, my butt touches. Then I do the butt pull off the wall with the fingertips, go back to my straight heels touch. And I just go between those two positions, exactly as we've done in the straddle. I can go down, butt touches with the tuck position, go back up, heels touch in the straight position. Try not to get the butt to touch when you're in the straight handstand, and try not to get the feet to touch when you're in the tuck. You could, com then, you could then combine both of those things together. So I could go straight, straddle butt touches, tuck, butt touches, straight, heels touch. Straddle butt touches, straight heels touch, butt touches with the tuck. I can stay on there for the straddle, pull back off, get my heels to touch. So what we don't want is this, or this, or this. Now obviously there's a lot going on there with the different tuck positions, the straddle positions. The flexibility that's required for both of those is going to change the distance you come down the wall, especially in the tuck, and how far your hands are away from the wall will dictate the amount your butt needs to go over. So you need to get that combination correct between the flexibility and find where your butt just kisses on the wall in the tuck position and the straddle position for you and your mobility and your limb length and your body control. So start with the basics, learn that heel pull, add the layers of the other things on top of it, have a play with those. Use it as a bit of an assessment, come back and revisit them if you're not ready for them yet. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions on this one. Thumbs up and subscribe will be appreciated and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.